Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Brian Rose joining us here, Mike Sempervivi. And before the break, I asked, could an idiot like me, a man who has not played a video game since uh, 1986, I believe. 86? Yeah. Wow. It's been a while. Maybe maybe 88, but, you know, right around there. Would I be able to pick this up quickly, Brian? And you and other people in the chat as well uh, suggested uh, yes. Yeah, I I, com- I think you can. I think you can pick this up easily and play. Uh, compared to WWE's games, this is much more simple to pick up and just play from the get-go. There's a tutorial mode. Uh, there's many things you can do to just get yourself comfortable after a few matches. So it, it's very easy to pick up and play. Uh, way more so than WWE's games where it relies a lot on skill, a lot on uh, the systems in the game, like the submission system and the reversals and uh, stamina gauges. There's none of that in Fight Forever. And I think that's a big plus because the 2K series has gone on too much into simulation and that's kind of not fun in a wrestling game. Like when I want to play a wrestling game, I just want to go in there and like kick people's butts. Uh, I don't want to like learn a system and all that. Fight Forever uh, borrows heavily from No Mercy, as I've I've said before, and it's a much it harkens back to a much more simpler era in video games where you just pick up and play. And this is the definition of a pick up and play game. So I think Brian, you can definitely pick this up, and you'd be right at home after a few matches. Well, Brian, I want to thank you for doing the show here today. Hey, if you want to stick around, you want to hear my video game history real quick? Since everyone sure. seems to be shocked. All right, this is what sure. happened. So okay. I, I think the last video game I played would have been 1987, okay? Because uh, in about sixth grade, I got into video games. And man, when I, got, when I get into something, I am into it. And I just did nothing. but I played video games. And, you know, all of them, Super Mario Brothers and Dig Dug. And, man, I could beat every game. People go, Brian, that's no skill. Wrong. I could beat every single game until, until I ran into Mighty Bomb Jack. Uh, the yeah. worst video game. The And apparently I've been told, like, online, I'm not, I'm not alone. The worst video game ever. The worst, you know, instructions for a video game ever. Empire Strikes Back. Man, I got so mad at that game. I could not beat that game. I was furious. And then in seventh grade, I uh, I broke my arm. Uh, I, I, was, I tripped over a tennis racket, of all things. The only bone I ever broke. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't have a left arm. So at the time, Nintendo had those uh, controllers. But they had a thing where you could put a deal over the little controller where you go like this. And so it had like a little joystick instead of, you know, there was a plus and you push up, down, side, All side. Right. It had a little yeah. it had a little joystick attachment. So I swear to God, I put the joystick attachment in my mouth. And so I used <laughs> my right hand to push the buttons and I used my, my mouth to move. I still was just killing on video games. Like I was so into it that nothing was going to stop me from playing my games. And then, uh, and then you know what actually killed my uh, video game playing was I discovered pro wrestling. And uh, from from the end of seventh grade, beginning of eighth grade on, it was like I was all in on pro wrestling. I watched nothing but wrestling. Me and my friends did backyard wrestling. I I started taking gymnastics so that I could do wrestling on the uh, on everything. And I never played a video game again. I just was. It was like a thing in my life that I was a hundred percent into. And then like when it was done, it was like it's over. It's a part of my life that's over. I never got another like people are going oh brian probably a uh whatever guy bro i never even not one time did i ever even use that stuff i didn't even nothing it was just done no game genie no never even heard of it like people are going nothing people are throwing all the other things that you know some you know whatever i never even heard of that much less did you ever play mike tyson's punch out yes you did not beat it. I did beat it. You did I not beat it. I swear to God. You know the trick of the I time swear where to God. blink and Listen, then you'd have to block. If I'm going to lie about it, I would lie and say that I beat Mighty Bomb Jack. But I could not beat Mighty Bomb Jack. That was the only game that I could never beat. But yes, oh. I beat Punch-Out. I didn't beat it a lot. Maybe twice. <laughs> but uh, I, I've never even beaten Punch-Out. What? That's I was, impressive. I was so I, disappointed. I wow. You go back and then I'm you run like, the whole thing I'm not thing like a big again. Punch-Out guy. Ugh. Bro, listen. The only change was Super Macho Man had different hair. I'm that telling you, if I if I had not beaten Punch Out, I would for sure remember. But I beat that game, and it was I think it was maybe twice, but that was it. But yes, 
God damn, I hated Mighty Bomb Jack. I hated that game. I've never even played Mighty Bomb Jack. Don't so I, I don't do it. Experienced it. I, I yeah. I, You'd probably quit I'm, video games. I'm turned too. off from it by what you're explaining to me. Yeah, I think actually it was discovering wrestling and Mighty Bomb Jack that like ended my my love of video games. I was like, I'm done. Oh. This this is stupid. I'd rather go. Uh, and you missed out so much in the last thirty plus years. Sure so did. Much, so many great games on the Super Nintendo, N64, PlayStation. He so missed much, the whole Sega Genesis so much era. Yeah, yeah, dude. The only the only game I ever played that was wrestling was was uh, was pro wrestling with Starman and uh, the Amazon, <laughs> yeah. and you chomp people. Well, wait, like, hold on, Brian. Did you ever, when you were going out with your friends or anything? And granted, as we were getting older, they started getting rid of, rid of a lot of arcades. But was there one around that had the WrestleMania game or had never played something it? Something there? Nope. Huh. Never. WrestleFest superstars, you? you missed out. None of them. Wow. Not a single one. Pro wrestling was Starman and the Amazon was the only one that I ever played. <laughs> ever. It was fun. It sure was. Yeah, Metal Gear saw people throw out these games. Nope, never. Oh. Never. The pride fighting game for PlayStation uh, 2, I think it was, was fun. It was limited, but it was actually very fun. Yeah. I ended with uh, with Sega. Before there was, I don't think it was Sega Genesis. And I wish I could remember the game that I uh, that I used to play on on Master Sega. Master System. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but that that was that was the end. That was a tail end. I was I was using the the joystick thing, and that was pretty much the end of it. Yeah, it probably was Master System. It was whatever yeah. that first Sega that you could buy was. I got that. Yeah, that was and, the that was the first one. The Master System was the first one. The Genesis came out in like <laughs> Guitar 90, Hero. 89. Get real. Come on, people. <laughs> All right, get some plugs in, Brian. I got to talk about Dynamite very quickly here. All right. I am on Twitter at BR26. I do all, most of the front page. Not most, but uh, I do a lot of the front page stuff on uh, on this very website. So I'm always on there literally every day. So check that out. I'm on Twitter at BR26. That's pretty much it for my plugs. Um, I used to do streaming on here uh, on Figure 4 Gaming. I might do that later this summer, so keep an eye out on that. Yeah, and that's there's so much there's so much wrestling stuff coming out, uh, video game wise. There's another game coming out in a few months that I might check out. And of course, I might stream this. I might stream whatever the next WWE game is. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right. Ryan Rose, I'd like to thank you. He's a great guy. Courier and Ian Carey and Josh Nason and all the other people that Brian does never acknowledges because he pays them. So why say oh, anything out of nice here. about you're an, any you're of an these idiot. people? I appreciate you coming on and I appreciate all the work you do for the scene. You're a shoot idiot. I like people behind the scenes. I don't need to do it publicly. Right, Brian? That's right. You have thanked me a lot, Brian. Of course I true. have. That's right. That's right. And you, you, you've uh, shout out to me at every now and then on the Brian and Benny show. That's and right. Other shows. Well, don't kill my gimmick, damn it. Thanks yeah, for coming really on today. On. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks so much. We got to do this dynamite thing real quick, everybody. Or people are going to get mad at me and, you know, yell at me that, oh, I see didn't want to review dynamite this week because of this or that. John Moxley is she. John Moxley won with the uh, Death Rider. This match ruled. Although I could have done without the clonking headbutts. But as far as like a wrestling match, I mean, this was a tough crowd. And, uh, and it took a while to get this crowd into it. When you're, when you're chopping back and forth for literally about 90 seconds and they're still not making any noise, that's a hard crowd. But they got everybody into it. And then we had a show-long storyline. Moxie and Kingston are uh, they're, they're having problems. And now, Renee is angry and you know what you don't want to do you don't want to make renee angry and uh this led to a segment later where the blackpool combat club attacked um kingston and uh they actually pilmanized his arm which the camera didn't even catch and nobody acknowledged and uh i i i think that that was not even like a planned spot it was just like claudio decided he was going to do it so uh i do not believe that kingston is being written out of storylines even though it sure looked that way even though he is going to to New Japan, I think the feeling is, you know, you could you could do an injury like that, but like everyone knows where he's going, so don't insult the audience. So anyway, I don't think that they're doing a, a shattered arm gimmick, but they actually did that on the show last night. We had a segment with Adam Cole and MJF, where uh, MJF wants to uh, to bond with Adam Cole for their tag team deal, and Adam Cole's working the guy, and he's 
going along with it. And they actually did kind of a, a funny thing that they kind of mocking WWE where Roderick Strong is like, dude, you know he's going to watch the show and see that you're just messing with him. And Cole goes, this guy ain't going to watch the show. And MGF immediately shows up, and they're like 15 minutes into the show, and he goes, hey, I'm not going to sit around and watch a wrestling show. Let's go party. And so he jumps in the car, and Adam Cole looks at Roderick Strong and goes, he ain't going to watch this back. We had uh, Orange Cassidy, Keith Lee, Vakingo versus Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. Uh, this was a – this was – it it almost became a train wreck, but it didn't. And uh, and even if it had, it was still really fun. Just one of those you know party matches. And uh, Keith Lee hit Menard uh, with what they are no longer calling the uh, BBC. It's got a new name, and uh, whatever that is, I've forgotten. But he won. And then we had another uh, long storyline with the Young Bucks and Hangman against the Dark Order. The Dark Order is angry at Hangman. They don't like him anymore. They're not his friend. They they accept an open challenge from the Young Bucks and Hangman. Hangman doesn't want to do it, but uh, Dark Order insists. So they do the match, and Hangman does not want to do anything with anybody in the Dark Order. The Bucks are forcing him to do it, and he doesn't want to do it, and it keeps leading him almost getting pinned. And uh, finally, they uh, they triple team Silver. Hangman hits the, uh, uh, the Buckshot, pins him, feels terrible about it. And then, of course, the BCC hits the ring to kill everybody, and Hangman gets whacked with the screwdriver, and uh, Dark Order just, sorry, you made your bed, and Hangman's so sad about it, and they leave. He's bleeding all over. They uh, they kill poor um, Eddie, and then John Moxley, who will not watch, he will allow it, but he will not watch the doom of Eddie Kingston. He announces July 19th in Boston, it is blood and guts. Jungle Boy did a heel promo, which uh, he's still got a ways to go. He's not like a comfortable promo yet. They gave him the things to say to get heat. Uh, he's better off still as a heel now that we've seen it. He's still better off than he was as a babyface. And the big line is, man, if I get my hands on Hook, I'm going to beat his ass. And so Hook's music immediately hits. And they have a foot race. And uh, these are two young guys, and one of them was a, uh, I forget what he did, Division One. I, I think it was lacrosse, actually. But man, this brother Hook, he can run. And he chases Jungle Boy, and Jungle Boy sprints backstage, and he screams, let's go! And they open the back door of the SUV, and this guy dives. I mean, he shoots across, diving into the back of this deal, and it takes off, and Hook's all angry. This was a great chase scene that they did here. Ruby Soho beat Alexi Nicole because uh, Britt Baker was sick legitimately and they're going to do their uh their match in the uh, tournament next week and then the main event was uh jericho and sammy versus sting and darby and i'm sure y'all know what happened they set up tables they were way too far away sting is a madman he jumped from a ladder in the ring to these tables that were way too far away and to give i mean to give him credit you never seen a guy jump so far at 64 years old. He managed to... He still didn't make it, though. He hit his face on uh, on poor... Uh, I don't know what was worse, like the knee of Sammy or Singh's face, but he lost a tooth. He's bleeding everywhere. He still got back in the ring, and he submitted Chris Jericho. So uh, Sting and Darby on their way to something. Guess we'll see what that is. But uh, very good main event, and I like the show. Back in a moment. Observer Live. This plaque... I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh-oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh, my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is. Presented to F4W that. Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh-huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here. You big fat whale! Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey. out there. Uh oh. Hey! Uh what are you doing? Brian? Oreo? Hey, oh. I'm taking over the show! Oh no. Dog! Oreo! Hit that music, brother! Ah, oh, the hell with it. You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. Oreo. No! When 
can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.